We're now to those escalating tensions on the European Union's eastern border. EU foreign ministers today agreed to expand sanctions against Belarus in retaliation for what they call the engineering of a migration crisis at Europe's doorstep. The new measures will target officials, travel agents and airlines which help to bring migrants to Belarus, most of those migrants coming from Middle Eastern countries. Thousands of men, women and children are stranded in freezing conditions on the frontier with Poland. Warsaw has declared an exclusion zone along the border and is not allowing aid workers or journalists access. At least nine people are known to have died trying to cross the border in recent weeks. Crowds of people gathered on the Belarus side of the border hoping to cross into Poland. Just some of more than an estimated 4,000 camping out in freezing forests in the hope of making a new life in the European Union. But the EU doesn't want to let them in. It accuses Belarus of manufacturing the crisis as retribution for earlier sanctions the bloc imposed on Minsk and of giving refugees false hopes of crossing the border. What we're experiencing from Minsk, this inhumane system of using refugees as tools to exert pressure on the European Union, has not changed, but got worse over the last days. After talks on Monday, the EU foreign ministers agreed on steps to tackle the situation. We are looking at all possible solutions to stop the regime, the Lukashenko regime, from targeting us and from targeting its own population. And we agreed to expand the scope of the sanctions regime on Belarus. In what seemed to be an attempt to ward off those sanctions, Belarus said it now wanted to return migrants home, but that they did not want to go. These people, I must say, are very stubborn. No one wants to return, and understandably so. They have nowhere to go back to. They have no place to live there. They know there's nothing to feed their children with. Moreover, some are simply afraid for their lives. The Polish Interior Ministry has announced that in December it will start building a wall along about half the border to keep refugees and migrants out. But some Polish locals are aware of the desperate situation of the people who have somehow made it across the border. They signal an offer of emergency help with a green light in the darkness and a chance at survival. Well, to discuss this situation, I'm joined now by the German lawmaker, Metin Hackverdi. He's a Social Democrat member of the German parliament. He is a spokesman on EU affairs. Mr. Hackverdi, it's good to have you back on the program. When we have heard from these migrants at the border area, when they've been asked where they want to go, almost all of them say, in unison, it's not Poland, they all want to go to Germany. Does that give... Germany or impose upon Germany a special responsibility for these migrants? Or what's the thinking among lawmakers such as yourself? Of course, we have a, a special responsibility, not only because of the fact, uh, which you just stated, uh, that most of them uh, are stating that they want to go to Germany, but also, of course, because of the size of Germany, our responsibility for every European issue within the European Union. But then, of course, because we are in the middle of Europe and uh, are not one of the border states outside the European, that uh, have a border outside the, uh, the European Union, that makes us, of course, uh, special, uh, reliable. And we've seen Germany and, and Poland standing in solidarity um, on this issue, which has not been the case recently when it comes to other areas. Germany says it supports Poland's actions at the border, but we've also seen Poland using force to push back migrants. It is a problem. It is a serious problem um, in, in two issues. Um, one is um, we have to uh, control borders and we have to control the situation uh, of migrants, uh, refugees and migrants coming to the EU. Um, obviously, uh, Mr. Lukashenko decided to use a 
I would say, hostile instrument and using human beings uh, as such a hostile instrument, which is, uh, which I really condemn, which is a, a tragedy, uh, a human tragedy. Um, on the other side, um, Europe as a whole, not only Poland, but Europe as a whole, we have to uh, get our homework done. We know that, uh, we have been knowing this for years now, to have a, a, a common European Union uh, agreed policy on, on migration and, and, and asylum. Um, and we don't have that right now. And that is catching up with us mm -hmm. now on the situation to the border. And we've got news tonight that EU foreign ministers um, have agreed to slap new sanctions on Belarus. In your opinion, is that going to be enough to get Lukashenko to stop what the EU calls state-sponsored human trafficking? I would say it's worse than state-sponsored human trafficking. It's it's uh, it's hostile. It's hostile towards Poland. It's hostile towards the European Union generally, uh, because obviously Mr. Lukashenko is uh, is trying to get some sort of revenge, some sort of uh, bargaining position uh, towards the European Union. Is using human beings for that. So um, it's it's an awful situation. Uh, I hope that the Russian Federation is not. Um, from using the opportunity to be a, a part of a solution of the problem and not one of the causes of the problem. But yes, we have to put sanction on it. I, I support this. Uh, uh, I support this, what the European leaders of the European Union decided today. Um, and I hope that uh, I'm, we hear we have different, different reactions from, from Minsk so far on this, on this, on these sanctions. I hope that they will have a, an impact on uh, Mr. Lukashenko. It's hard to imagine, though, Mr. Akvedi, that the, the president of Belarus would have signed off on, on bringing these migrants into the country without the support of Russian President Vladimir Putin. And yet we've got Germany calling on Putin now to put pressure on Minsk. Um, how, can we, how can we realistically expect him to do that? Isn't he part of the problem? in the eyes of Europe? Well, that's the question I just asked. Is he part of the problem? Is he part of the solution? In my experience so far, uh, uh, the role of, of Vladimir Putin was to cause a problem and then um, offering them himself as a solution also at the same time. Um, this is too serious to play these games. Um, this is very, very serious for the integrity of, of the European Union, but also for all those human individuals that are affected so so violently, it's uh, it's it's a shame. Um, um, we have we have to be very clear on this one that we expect not only Mr. Lukashenko but also Mr. Putin to be part of the solution. German lawmaker Metin Hakverdi joining us tonight, Mr. Hakverdi. It's good to see you again. We appreciate your time and your insights. Thank you. Thank you.